Hi guys, welcome to another video on Mark V Golf GTI. Um, so I had the engine management light come on in the vehicle and then ran it through diagnostics and this is the code that I got. So it's a P0010. So it's the camshaft position actuator circuit bank one. So what I did was checked it out under the bonnet, see if there is anything, any wiring loose or anything of that sort. And came across this bit that wasn't connected up properly so it seems like it broke off so as you can see me pulling out this bit here it's not supposed to be in there it's supposed to be connected to that bit there on the side so ordered a new part I'll get that replaced and here it is here's the new part um, it cost me around about 37 pounds and I'll put the link in the description for it so that's what it is, the camshaft variable solenoid valve at VBT. So that's what we'll be replacing today. So as you can see the top bit there is a lot different. I've got a little clip here of the old one when I took it out with the new one side by side so you can see the difference. So these are the tools that I'll be using. Um, all it is just a cheap little DIY kit. And it's just got a magnetic uh, parts dish, so it does help, so you don't lose any screws or anything. But to be honest, you won't really need all these. Um, all you really need is a wrench. Um, you could do with something to put the screws in if you need it. If not, it's fine. Um, really, all you need is a wrench. Um, you need a T20 for a couple of the screws. And then also, you need a M5 for one of the bolts. So I've got my tools ready here uh, before we change the part and here is the part that we will be replacing. So I'll run you through it step by step. Um, as you can see the two clips that I've got circled, um, we just need to remove these. There is a actual VAG tool um, to remove these but it's not really needed to be honest, I haven't got that. Um, you can just do that with a flat headed screwdriver, uh, it works just as well. But yeah, it does make it easier with the VAG um, actual tool. So you can see me here taking these two clips out. Um, I am using the flat headed screwdriver as I don't have the VAG toolkit. So apologies, it's not really in the shot, but it is pretty simple to remove. Just put the flat headed screwdriver in between and it should just uh, pop out. So I didn't really need to use the uh, screwdriver for this one as it was already broken. I just had it in place temporarily until I received the new part. So as you can see, uh, both of them are removed now. Just that it gives it a bit of access and you can move those out of the way. So when you are taking the T20 uh, torque screws off. So here they are, there's one on the left and there's one on the right. As I mentioned before, the one on the left, it's quite easy to access. Um, but the one on the right, as you can see that pipe there is in between, so I couldn't get the actual ratchet through there. So what I'm going to do to access that is remove the induction kit. But to avoid taking it off fully, I'm just going to loosen up this clamp here. Uh, it just allows me to pull the induction kit towards me without having to fully take it off. Just makes it easier and gives me a bit of room. So as you'll see here now, just pull the induction kit towards me and towards the front of the car. And it just gives it a little bit of room for me to work on. So as you can see here, here's the induction kit that I pulled up. And as you can see now, I've got a bit of room that can access that. So I'm just gonna move the pipe out of the way just so I can get a ratchet through there. So as I mentioned, these are the two screws, one on the left and the one on the right that we need to get to. But still, the one on the right is harder to access. So what I'm going to do is remove this little bolt here, which you need the M5 for. Um, and then I can move the pipe out of the way. So get that removed. Which now gives me access to that uh, bolt on the right hand side. So I'll just remove that and then remove the easier one on the left. And 
And then once the bolts are off, it's pretty easy. You just need to twist and pull together uh, to take the actual part off. Um, if you want to avoid any oil spillage, um, put, a, put a cloth or something there because there is a bit of oil that leaks from there. As you can see, here's the old part that I removed. So, there it is. Um, it just makes it easier to have a look. look there's one on the right, one on the left. Um, you can see it a lot better now. But yeah, like I said, if you want to put a little cloth or something just to avoid any oil spillage, um, as you can see on mine. So here it is, the old one, and there's a new one. So you can see the difference at the top there where my old part had broken off. So as you can see here, I'm just going to put some clean oil um, onto the new part before I put it on um, just around the O-ring here. Just makes it well lubricated for it to go back into place. Um, and as you can see, just need to put it back in there. Same again, but this time push and twist at the same time with the top uh, black plastic bit facing towards the inside of the car. Um, it's the exact replacement, so it should just fit in pretty much easily. And as you can see here, all you need to do now is reverse the uh, procedure. So putting the two T20 bolts back into place to begin with. And then here I am putting the M5 bolt back on there. Just tighten it up again after I've completed that. So we're just going to put the induction kit back on. Um, so I'm just going to place that back into the correct position and then tighten up that clamp. So once I've put all that back into place, just going to put these clips back on. Um, they should be pretty simple to put back in. You'll hear it click back into place. Um, that shows it's pretty much done. So there's just the top one and then the bottom one that connects to the fuel pump as well. Um, once that's done, that's pretty much the job done. So there you have it. So I'm just going to turn the car on now, uh, turn it over, see if everything's running fine again. So there you have it guys, there's the part replaced, um, here it is, you can see the new part is on there now, car seems to be running fine, um, yeah, thanks for watching. So there you have it guys, um, the part's been replaced, pretty simple process, um, and then I've just removed the uh, warning light that came on the dash, and I've been running the car for two weeks now, and it hasn't come back since. So thanks for watching, uh, make sure you subscribe, like and comment, and... There are more videos coming on the Mark 5 Golf GTI.